Discoveries in technology, medicine, and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on phage therapy, brought to you by Lonza. Today, we are talking with Jonathan Solomon, the CEO of Biomix, and one of the pioneers in phage research. Biomix is a microbiome company developing both natural and engineered phage therapy for indications such as acne, atopic dermatitis, inflammatory bowel disease, also known as IBD, or even colorectal cancer. Jonathan, welcome to our podcast. Thank you for having me here. The microbiome is a crucial component of human health. Some specific bacteria, however, can cause a pathogenic bacterial infection. Phages are bacterial viruses representing a new age of live biotherapeutics. They specifically target and invade bacterial cells. Their specificity allows them to be used to target a clinically relevant bacterial species while sparing all beneficial bacteria. Biomix develops phage-based therapies as candidates targeting their respective bacterial targets. Now, Jonathan, could you tell us why did you choose to research phages for pharmaceutical therapies? What's interesting about phage is that it has a long history of safety. So we know it's safe, it's been acknowledged by regulatory authorities as safe, and it actually works. So there's numerous evidence of case studies that you use a phage cocktail and it sort of cures miraculously patients. So you manufacture phages and are very successful at it. We at Lonza, we manufacture viruses, viral vectors for cell and gene therapies, encountering and overcoming challenges downstream and even improving the overall yield. How do you see progress in the field from the perspective of phages? The differences is that in phage, the fermentation is microbial. Uh, so actually the upstream is a lot more straightforward than a mammalian line. Uh, so that actually makes things easier in some aspect. Um, and secondly, the downstream, I think a lot of the cases in viruses is intravenous delivery, sometimes to the brain. In our initial indications, we're pursuing topical and oral. So the downstream requirements are not that tough and stringent. Mm -hmm. So if the downstream is not that tough, what do you find challenging then? The real challenge is that the product is a cocktail. So our acne product is three phage, the IBD product is five phage, and that's where we see a lot of complexity of running multiple runs, mixing everything together, and characterizing every single phage in the cocktail. And that is quite an undertaking, which I think you have less in viruses. So you mentioned the cocktail. I imagine that characterizing various phages simultaneously really sounds tough as a tough challenge. Are you using computational science to help you with that? We need computational to understand what target are we pursuing and actually computational in understanding how to build a cocktail. So we can actually sequence bacteria in phage and understand which receptors we're binding to on the bacteria and making sure that phage cocktail hits the bacteria from different receptors. And that's big progress uh, with the science these days. Mm -hmm. I imagine that you also plan to move towards large-scale manufacturing at a certain point. So what about scale-up? What kind of challenges do you expect to see when your treatments get to that stage? You know, we're doing up to 50 liters fermentary fermentations. Um, when you go to a much larger scale, I think that's where we as a small biotech would value finding a larger player because it really is outside the expertise of uh, people in the company and people in biotech companies. So I think that would be a brave new frontier for us. Now let's talk about your targets. Your phage-based treatments target inflammatory bowel disease, acne, or even colorectal cancer. How do you decide uh, what kind of therapies to go into? I think in the end, the threshold that we have is always, we need to make sure that we understand uh, that the bacteria are there, the biology and a rationale, right? And, and there aren't that many targets because the microbiome creates a lot of excitement. But for example, in the field of diabetes, we have not found an exciting target. So since the 
area you are active in is is so so broad. I imagine you would like to focus on performing basic research, and in that case, collaborating with a CMO or CDMO is crucial. Could you maybe share some advice to startups who would decide to take the same route as you did, especially with the desire to remain independent as long as possible without the manufacturing help? My main takeaway is, as a startup, to make it successful, it's all about partners. And it's not, it's such a complicated field that you just can't do these things by yourself, no matter how successful and talented you are. Investors make a big difference. Whether you can have some sort of a good collaboration with a CRO to do your animal studies and a good collaboration with a potential CMO to do your studies, that's the basis. The more collaborations you have, the better. I think the world has moved on from being siloed, and that's kind of the best advice that I can give. That's a great advice, going towards collaboration. Thanks, Jonathan. Your insights are truly inspiring. Join us next time as we speak to experts in the pharmaceutical industry to get a view on the latest research and technology trends.